Good afternoon. So this is Prashant, second year in from the Nurse Medical College. So I'm here to propose the motion. So before I go on to certain technicalities raised, let me point out certain practical issues that we are facing on human clinical trials as well. So first, on a trial we start, we need to go on the cost effectiveness. So when we see that a cost trial costs around 2.5 billion dollars, it's around 2.4 billion that's actually spent on human trials alone. So this is around the cost effectiveness part. And before we go on to what the phase is doing, let me also cite that there's a phase zero where a suboptimal dose is given. And there's a phase one where a safety dosage is given. So this suboptimal dosage by itself is only fixed based on the animals. And it's not based on humans. So this suboptimal dosage by itself could prove lethal to humans as well. So this still remains unanswered as to how it could be combated. The calculation behind giving a suboptimal dose is not known yet. This is one point that I want to base. Secondly, the reporting of adverse drug reactions. How far do these clinical studies go perfectly? Unless the clinical study goes perfectly, the results obtained from it make no use at all. We could say a thousand studies conducted, but even one study conducted perfectly could give us the required results. In a study scene, generally the post-marketing surveillance adverse drug reactions and the clinical trial adverse drug reactions. On a comparison between the two, the post-marketing surveillance showed a very large scale of around seven as per study conducted at the Harvard University. So this is one point I would like to raise. Furthermore, even if the studies were conducted perfectly, I would cite the example of thalidomide disaster, where none can refute as to what happened. It was a study conducted very much perfectly, advocated as a drug that caused no serious adverse effect at all, unless and until they saw in the offspring. It was in the offspring that the uh, thalidomide disaster uh, like showed up itself. No one can understand what the drug can cause, when it can cause, unless and until we really know what is going to happen. We are not for fortune tellers to that, obviously. The French biotrial tragedy is as well something that has to be noted. And there is something called as the unreported clinical trial breakdown. What was reported is what we see in our eyes. What was unreported can never be answered. Who's going to answer all this stuff? Inadequate and underreporting of trial results in the animals by itself is a big thing. It is seen that most studies, because of money or maybe several other reasons of their own, they have been changing only minor things from the previous study and conducting something new. And they call it innovation. But is it really innovation? That has to be, you know, identified first. Yeah, yeah. Experimental treatment, treatment and its effectiveness has to be studied very much clearly, which is a part of the ethical review board's work. But the Vienna Congress in its uh, convention has clearly stated that human research upon informed consent has to take place under very much closely related guidelines. Now these guidelines are not that easy to be controlled upon and to be survived upon. So these are certain practical difficulties which are not being taken care of and hence are the stronger position. Thank you. Questions from the judges? Thank you. 